Kathleen from Keeping the Peace Defensive Handgun Training for Women and today we're going to be talking about hitting low on the target. Uh, this is probably the most common problem that students come to me with and I've had several requests from people on YouTube to talk about hitting low on the target. So I want to discuss a list of things that can cause you to hit below what you're aiming at. And um, these aren't necessarily in the order of most common occurrence but I'll kind of discuss that as we go through the video today. The first thing that could cause you to hit low would be a compromised grip. Um, I don't believe I've done a video specifically on grip before, but when you do grip the firearm with your dominant hand or your firing hand, you want to make sure that your second finger, okay, is actually touching underneath the trigger guard. If it's not, if it's like this, let's say, and you have space between the trigger guard and that finger, especially when you get your other hand involved, if there is space between the hands and the trigger guard, the gun is going to travel in the path of least resistance. The gun will actually move until it meets some resistance and then kind of bounce back up. So you want to make sure that you're actually touching under the trigger guard and providing resistance, firm resistance underneath here, okay? So that's the first thing that could cause that. So if you're shooting like this with space, it's just going to bow down. The second one would be milking the grips of the gun, which is squeezing the grip, the entire hand, as you're pressing the trigger. Sometimes people will only move this finger or this finger and the way to test yourself and see if you're a milker is to turn your hand palm up and move your trigger finger and see if any of your other fingers move along with your trigger finger. If you find that your other fingers are doing this then you're probably a milker and if you do that I'll try to do this so you can see it. I'm gonna milk the gun I want you to watch the sights hopefully you can see the sights lined up here. As I squeeze the, the entire gun, you can see it actually move in sort of a downward leftward pattern, okay? So what you want to do to prevent that is to isolate the trigger finger, make sure that it's the only thing that's moving. You can do some various exercises to help train yourself to do that. One of the things I have my students do is take a big ball of silly putty or thera putty from the physical therapist, some type of putty in your hand, a big ball of it and press with your trigger finger, make a dent with your trigger finger, but don't allow there to be a dent from any of the other fingers in your hand. That's a good way to isolate. Or you can do the exercise with another person where you grip each other's hands um, and you can press one finger and let them tell you if you're gripping the other fingers. Or you can just watch yourself. You know, you can actually use a trainer gun, press the trigger. That would be one of the good uses for the trigger trainer. Press the trigger, watch your other fingers, and see if you're making any movement there. So that's something to work on. And the majority of people, at least in the beginning, are milkers because you've been designed with a sympathetic squeeze response. The fingers are designed to work together. Uh, another thing that can help is to make these three fingers into a unit. If you make these three a unit, it's a lot easier to hold them still while you move your trigger finger. Um, that's just, you know, something to try. The next one is, of course, jerking the trigger. You've already heard about this. If you jerk on your trigger, you're going to just pull the entire gun down. Usually, jerking the trigger is an anticipatory response to recoil. So the person is developing angst inside about, oh, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes, and then at the last second, they just jerk the trigger to get it over with, okay? Um, so that's something to look into. If you're doing everything else right, but you jerk the trigger, trigger you're going to definitely pull low. Sometimes it's a low lift depending on the person, okay? So you can see some overlap between these things as far as what you're gonna see on the target, low, low left. Some people are doing a combination of these various things. So you're gonna have to analyze yourself probably one thing at a time. The next one would be looking over the sights of the handgun. So rather than looking through the sights, you're actually looking at the target. If you're doing that, you're gonna hit low because you're actually holding the handgun underneath your eyes. So you have to definitely look through the rear sight at the front sight, place it on the target. Your target should be blurry, your rear sight should be blurry, your front sight should be perfectly in focus. Again, if you're looking at the target, you're probably going to shoot low. 
looking for your hits. I see a whole lot of people do this, especially in the beginning. They're so excited to see where they hit the target that at the last second they drop the gun to see where they hit. And when I try to describe what's going on to students, I'll often use a word picture about throwing spitballs through a straw when you're a kid. If you are getting ready to blow a spitball through a straw and at the last second you turn your head, it's not going to hit the person you were aiming at. It's going to kind of throw the trajectory off toward the way that you spun your head. Same thing's going to happen. If you're aiming your sights, but at the last second you look over your gun to see where you hit, then you're going to be actually kind of throwing your bullet. You need to make sure that you follow through and keep everything steady until the shot's complete. Okay. Um, the next one would be breaking the wrist down. If you don't keep your wrist a firm wall behind the gun, if you allow this to happen, that's going to throw you low. So you need to make sure that your wrist stays firm and strong the entire time. You don't want any kind of wrist movement to be occurring during your shooting. The last one would be fighting recoil. I hear a lot of people say, well, if I don't hold the gun down, isn't it going to shoot high? There's a little bit of a misconception in some people's minds about when recoil occurs. Recoil occurs after the shot, okay? And it's so close together because everything happens so fast, it's hard to really distinguish it in your mind. The gun's actually, you know, uh, cycling and everything so quickly that you're not really seeing that stuff happen. But you should be following through your shot and holding everything, you know, fairly steady. You're not preventing it from rising naturally with recoil, but you're also not pushing down against the recoil. Recoil should happen. The gun should move up slightly. People just kind of in their mind think it's going to be a lot, so they're trying to hold it down. So the bullet actually leaves the muzzle either at the same time or just before you feel the recoil. So you pushing down against it is actually going to push your shot low. The way to see if you're doing this is to look and see from which direction you're actually recovering from recoil. Recovery from recoil should always have to come back down into the sight plane. If you're ha having to come back up into the sight plane after the shot has taken place, then you're actually pushing down against recoil. Recoil never goes down. Recoil will never push your gun below your sight line. It will always push it above, okay? So you should be recovering from somewhere up here, not from down here, okay? If you're recovering from a downward plane, then you are either fighting recoil by pushing down on the gun, or you're looking for your shots, or you're looking over top of the gun which was here, okay? Um, so I, I guess the best thing to do would be evaluate yourself, maybe take a partner with you to watch you. Videotaping yourself is a really good idea because you'll see things that you're doing in a videotape that you might not see otherwise. A lot of these things are so subtle that you don't perceive them yourself at first, but once you start to perceive them in yourself, then you can start actually making some progress of getting rid of these tendencies. Um, even the best shooters under the you know, under certain circumstances, we'll kind of see these things crop back up. <laughs> like if you're nervous or stressed or something like that, or sometimes people just have a bad day at the range, and that's normal. It goes with anything. If you're a musician, some days you're right on it, some days you're not, and that's just kind of a normal thing. But if you have a constant pattern of shooting low or low left, these might be some of the things that you could evaluate, and if you could work on these maybe one at a time, you could probably get rid of that habit and improve your, your shooting. Uh, while you're training yourself through these things, don't ever go for speed. Anytime you go for speed before you've conquered shooter errors, you're just going to increasingly make your errors worse. The other thing, too, is that if you're committing any of these errors or a combination of them, the further out your target is, the greater angle of error you're going to see. Okay, so um, if you're already committing these errors, then shooting at 20 yards and completely missing the target is not really going to do you any good. You need to make sure that you're hitting, you know, at a fighting range first before you start working out that far because you're wasting your ammo if you're missing the target or hitting it in the crotch when you intend to hit it in the high chest. So um, hopefully this will be helpful um, for those of you who have been asking me about this or it might be helpful for students who have already been training with me and um, are still working through some of these issues because sometimes you leave the range, you've talked about these things, and it's hard to remember them all. What is all that stuff I'm supposed to try to look for? So hopefully this will be helpful. If any of you have thought of some other things that you might do to bring your shots low, feel free to chime in, do a video response, leave comments. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Or if you have methods of overcoming some of these things that I haven't mentioned, I'd love to hear that too. This is Colleen with Keeping the Peace signing off. Have a wonderful day and God bless. Bye-bye.